liftoff. As the countdown to Mars continues, the perseverance of humanity launching the next generation of robotic explorers to the Red Planet. Welcome, one and all, to another epic installment of Space News This Week. This is the second episode of this new series I'm experimenting with, and uh, I've already found one issue that needs addressing. My initial plan for these videos was to outline all of the launches that we can look forward to over the next seven days. However, due to the volatility of rocket launch dates, this ambition may have been a little too lofty, as most of my reporting on last week's video ended up being a bit inaccurate due to delays, technical hitches and whatnot. So instead I'm thinking maybe we should try and focus these videos more on what happened last week with only a brief summary of what's expected to occur over the next seven days. Let me know what you think of this format. And anyway, with that, uh, with that intro out of the way, let's get into the news. We'll be taking a look at progress in both the private and public spacecraft industry, as well as exploring some of the most notable historic events that happened this week across the decades. So let's get right into last week's events. On July 28th, we got our first glimpse inside Virgin Galactic's Spaceship 2. This suborbital space plane is designed primarily for space tourism, though there is some scope for it being used as a research platform for NASA as well. I am especially excited about the Spaceship 2's development, as it may well be launching from Spaceport Cornwall, a launch site situated only about an hour's drive from where I live, so who knows, maybe someday in this show we can have some actual live at the scene reporting. Tim, I'm coming for you! <laughs> Across the pond over at Boca Chica, Texas, plans for a Starship SN5 static fire test were thwarted on Monday due to hardware issues, but this was rectified and a subsequent attempt on July the 30th was a roaring success. This is very exciting news as its success paves the way for SpaceX's first test flight of a full-scale Starship tank in the form of a 150-meter hop. The date for this historic moment has not yet been confirmed, but Elon has promised on Twitter that it would be uh, soon. <laughs> and while we're on Starship news, the Starship SN8 is now well into construction. It'll be the first full-size Starship vessel to come complete with nose cone and fins since the ill-fated Mark 1. And the SN8 is exciting because its objective will be to test the Starship design during high altitude flight. So we should be seeing some very exciting videos emerge once construction of this prototype is completed and subsequent tests can begin. Back at NASA, we saw the successful launch of Mars 2020 on July the 30th. The cutting edge Perseverance rover and the Ingenuity Martian helicopter are now well on their way to the Red Planet. I won't discuss the details of this mission too much, as I did a very deep dive into this mission during last week's video, so instead, I'll just whack a link in the top right-hand corner of your screen and in the video description, in case you missed that one and want to hear a little bit more about Mars 2020. Finally, last week, we saw the safe return of Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley on August the 2nd aboard the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft, proving once and for all the validity of commercial human spaceflight. The success of this mission will clear the way for the Dragon's next crewed outing, this time with four astronauts, with a proposed launch date of around September 21st, 2020. This will be another outing to the ISS, this time with a mission duration of six months. So that wraps up all the cool stuff we saw over the last seven days. But what's happening this week? One rocket launch we will hopefully get to see will be the launch of Rocket 3.1, which will be launched by Astra from the Pacific Spaceport Complex in Alaska. This will be the first test launch of Astra's Rocket 3.1, no payload has been disclosed by Astra themselves. Presumably, there likely isn't a payload at all, given the fact that this is simply a test launch of the rocket itself. But who knows? Maybe they're launching some fresh fish for the space dolphins. The launch window for this mission will be August the 3rd to around August the 8th, which hopefully means it'll happen sometime this week with launch conditions permitting. 
Later on in the week, on August the 6th, Russia plans to launch a Soyuz rocket, which will place a GLONASS-K navigation satellite into orbit. The GLONASS-K satellites are upgraded probes for Russia's GLONASS positioning and timing network. Also expected to launch around August the 6th will be the 10th batch of SpaceX Starlink satellites on Starlink 9 aboard a Falcon 9 booster as part of SpaceX's ongoing effort to provide near-global high-speed internet access. Coming along for the ride will be two Earth Observation microsatellites for Black Sky Global as part of their mission to provide a fleet of imaging satellites that will enable frequent revisits over the same location to help analysts identify changes over short periods of time. And that's it, actually. Slightly less eventful week for launches, but hey, over the next few days we may end up seeing more developments over at Boca Chica and some dates may emerge as to when SpaceX plan on launching their next Starlink missions, as well as a couple of other planned Falcon 9 launches that are yet to receive definitive launch dates. India is also yet to announce launch days for various rockets from its Satish Dhawan Space Center, so we may hear more about these as news continues to roll in. Additionally, the ESA are expected to announce an August launch date for their next Ariane 5 launch, which will carry the Galaxy 30 Communications Satellite, a mission extension vehicle for Intel Sat 1002, and a BSAT 4B satellite. We covered this rocket briefly last week, as the original plan was to have it launch on July the 20th which then became July the 31st after it was felt more pre-launch checks were necessary. However, this was then scrubbed entirely due to a sensor issue with the liquid hydrogen tank. No further dates have been confirmed by the ESA, but here's hoping it'll be sooner rather than later. So we've covered last week and now we've covered this week. But what about every other week in history? which falls within these dates. Well, a lot has happened over uh, humanity's existence, but here are some of my favorite things from space history this week. To kick off, August the 5th, 1930 was the birth of Neil Armstrong, who as I'm sure you all know would become the first person to step foot on the moon. On the same day, 71 years later in 2011, NASA launched their Juno mission, which gave us all some absolutely breathtaking images of our solar system's giant, as well as invaluable scientific data on Jupiter. The next day on August the 6th, but this time in 1961, history is made in the Soviet Union. Gurman Titov became the second human to orbit the Earth aboard the Vostok 2 and continued to orbit our planet a further 16 times over a total of one day, one hour and 18 minutes. His legendary flight proved that humans could live and work outside of the Earth's atmosphere and he became the first person to sleep in space, sleeping for just over one orbit. One of my favorite pieces of trivia about this spaceflight legend was how he alarmed medical staff upon Earth touchdown by opening and downing an entire beer in complete violation of the rules in celebration. He was then sent to hospital to check that he wasn't ill, but luckily it all came back fine. Back in the US on August the 7th, 1959, NASA launched their unmanned spacecraft, Explorer 6, which would become the first US satellite to photograph the Earth and the first to transmit pictures of Earth via satellite. The probe also studied trapped radiation of various energies, galactic cosmic rays, among a few other things. The same day, 12 years later in 1971, the crew of Apollo 15 returned to Earth one of the capsule's parachutes failed, but luckily splashdown still occurred at a safe speed, albeit maybe a little bit harder than the crew would have liked at the time. And that concludes my little rundown of cool things that happened in space history this week. And that's it, that pretty much wraps up space news this week, this week. I hope you're enjoying this series, and like I say, I, I, I had a really good time reading all of your feedback and comments about last week's episode. This is a growing series. It's going to continue evolving over the next few episodes for sure. So if you've got any recommendations, feedback, or just other sort of general things you want to mention about the show, then do leave it in the comments down below. Was there anything we missed or anything you wanted us to go into more detail in? Again, let me know in the comments. I read all my comments. You can also leave comments in my Discord server, on Twitter. All of that is all linked in the video description. I think I finished saying my piece, so I'm going to leave it there, but I wish you all a very happy next seven days.